If you have an indwelling device, such as a tracheostomy tube or a feeding tube, a common complication which may arise is granulation tissue. In most cases, granulation tissue may simply be a painful irritation. However, in some individuals, granulation tissue may cause serious complications. Join me this week as I discuss what granulation tissue is, where granulation tissue forms, complications, and some treatment options. Granulation tissue is new connective tissue which is rich in microscopic blood vessels. This tissue forms on the surfaces of a wound during the healing process. As the body heals, the tissue fills in the injury and may eventually scar over. Through this process, healthy, normal skin is able to replace skin which was damaged. Usually, the appearance of granulation tissue is a good sign. When a wound first starts producing granulation tissue, it means that the body is starting to rebuild after the injury. Granulation tissue is usually light pink to red in appearance. It is also commonly bumpy and uneven and may be moist to the touch. The tissue is very fragile and prone to injury. In some cases, the body produces too much granulation tissue. This is a condition known as hypergranulation, overgranulation, exuberant tissue, or proud flesh. If the granulation tissue becomes painful or causes complications, medical treatment is often necessary. People who have permanent catheters and ports implanted may develop granulation tissue around the site of the implant. This is especially common if the implant is not properly fitted. If the indwelling device moves around, the flesh is continually re-injured and thus it produces granulation tissue to repair itself. It is important to maintain catheters, ports, and implants with care to avoid the development of granulation tissue. Sometimes, granulation tissue forms inside the body and may cause narrowing. For example, if the trachea is injured or irritated, the body can start to produce granulation tissue in an attempt to repair the injury. If it overgrows, this opening can narrow, causing difficulties with breathing. One thing to note, the most frequent late complication after having a tracheostomy is the development of granulation tissue. If you notice tracheostomy tube exchanges are extremely difficult or if the tracheostomy tube exchange causes a lot of blood, ask your medical provider if you may have granulation tissue. Doctors often treat hypergranulation with topical applications which weaken the granulation tissue so that it will stop growing. This encourages the body to move on to the next stage in healing. One of the most common treatments is silver nitrate. Silver nitrate is applied to the hypergranulated tissue. The silver nitrate will cause the granulation tissue to die. The tissue will turn gray and can be wiped off. Sometimes more aggressive tactics such as surgery to remove the excess tissue may be necessary. A doctor can evaluate a given case and determine the most appropriate course for treatment. Granulation tissue forms around devices which are not properly fitted. For indwelling devices, they should fit snugly. If the device is loose, this will damage the healthy tissue and cause granulation tissue to grow. For tracheostomy tubes, it is important the tracheostomy tube holder is pulled tight, but not too tight. Two fingers should fit between the tracheostomy tube holder and the neck. The area where the device touches the skin should be kept dry. For feeding tubes, products such as feeding tube pads will keep the site dry and prevent the feeding tube from irritating the skin. For tracheostomy tubes, gauze may be used to keep the tracheostomy dry. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.